Hi. This is a video tutorial designed to show how I do the deconvolution process within PixInsight. This is actually the second video that I've recorded after I released the first one. I got some great feedback from some people on the Cloudy Nights forum as well as on the PixInsight user forums on ways that I can improve the process and get even better results. So I've incorporated those that feedback here and I'll demonstrate how to do deconvolution in PixInsight and get some better results, some smaller stars and some sharper details. First thing we need, of course, is an image. So I'm going to double click on the desktop, which brings up the open file dialog box. And I'm going to choose this image here of M16. Now that it's open, I'm going to hit Control-0 to just enlarge the image a little bit, enlarge it to the largest size that will still fit within the workspace. And then, of course, we need to, this is the linear image. I mean, you can see it's still really dim. We need to do the auto stretch function. And we can open up screen transfer function and do auto stretch. Or one other thing that we can do that accomplishes the same thing is if we just hit control A while the image is selected, it also does the auto screen stretch. I'm going to minimize the screen transfer function for now. We'll come back to that later. So you can see here, I've got an image of M16, the Eagle Nebula. This is entirely hydrogen alpha data, and I think I can, I can gain even more detail by doing deconvolution. This was shot from my observatory in southern Arizona back in May and June of 2013. Um, it's 13 hours of data shot through a 3 nanometer hydrogen alpha filter on you know, a, an SBIG ST8300 camera. The uh, telescope is, one, is an Explore Scientific 6-inch F8 triplet refractor. It's a 152mm carbon fiber, and I've been happy with it so far. As you can see here, I've got a pretty nice image here. We've got some, some ragged edges from the stacking process. So before I even do any of the rest of this, I want to crop that stuff off with the dynamic crop. So just drag a nice little square there, take off that outside edge, just make all those ragged edges go away. Control zero again just to resize the image back to the image window. And so now we'll we'll start taking a look at this image and, and what we need to do in order to deconvolve it. Uh, the first thing we need to do is determine the point spread function. And we'll do that using PixInsight's dynamic PSF process module. The second thing I need to do is create a de-ringing mask, and I'll do that by using the star mask process module. Third thing I need to do is to create for myself a luminance mask to protect the low signal to noise ratio areas, and I'll do that in, in the way that you probably already do so by, when creating a luminance mask. I'll create it and stretch it and then apply it. Fourthly, because I have a slow machine, I'll create some previews around the image to kind of do a deconvolution on the areas that I care about and make sure that I'm getting the results that I want before I do it on the wider image. Once that stuff's all done, then we'll start the actual deconvolution. It doesn't take long, actually. First, we need to do, like I said, the dynamic point spread function. So from Process Explorer, I'll click on All Processes, and I'll scroll down here until I find the dynamic PSF process module and open that up. I'm also going to zoom in on my image over here a little bit. And I'm going to start selecting stars. And there's different ways to do this. And here's the way that I do it. It's the way that I can get some pretty good results with it. Select a star here, and you'll see I've got a Moffitt point spread function and basically some information about the stars. What I'm, what I'm basically looking for is I want stars that derive this Moffitt function, and I want to pick stars all over the image. I don't necessarily need to pick them all. I'll pick, I don't know, 40, 50, maybe 60 even. Just a nice smattering of stars from all over the image. I want to make sure that I'm not selecting any stars that are that are already saturated or that are, that are too bright or too dim. I just want to basically get a good representation of the data that's in this image. And so that's what I'm working on here. Just, you know, just going through the image and selecting stars. And this is going to take me a couple of minutes, so I'm going to pause the video right here until I get through the whole thing. I, you know, gone down that side there, and I'll just keep working my way through. So once I've got these uh, good selection done, I'll be right back. I 
So I've made it through the image and I've selected, as you can see, 50 stars here spread out throughout the image. Now what I want to do is I want to use these 50 stars to calculate the point spread function. And I do that by exporting a synthetic function. First thing I'll do is select control A so that I select all of the stars, all 50 of these stars that I chose out of the image. And then here in the dynamic PSF module there's this little camera looking thing that says to export a synthetic PSF function. I'll click that. See we PixInsight generates, whoops, minimize that. PixInsight generates a new image, generates an artificial star. You see at 900%, this is a representation of what those, the general profile of those 50 stars. Let's minimize that. And we'll just tuck them up here for now. And I'm also done with the dynamic PSF module, so I'll close that. So that's the first thing we needed to do is determine our dynamic points or point spread function. Second thing I need to do is create a deringing mask. I'll do that with a basic star mask. Here's the parameters that I tend to start with. Because we're working with a linear image, I'll take the noise threshold down much lower than the default of 0.1. Um, 0 0.02 is what I'm going to use here. Um, in my images, I find that to get the larger stars, which is really what we're trying to protect from here, I, I have to up the scale often to 6 or even 7 for a broadband image. I'm going to up it to 6 here. I'm going to change my small scale compensation to 2, or small scale growth to 2, my compensation to 3. I leave the smoothness at 16 to get a nice feathering around the stars for the D ringing. I'll drag the star mask over and generate a star mask just like I normally do. Um, on my slow laptop, which is about four years old now, this actually takes a couple of minutes, so I'm going to pause again here. And there's our star mask. Um, I'm going to go ahead here, just for clarity, and I'm going to rename this view with an identifier of deringing mask because while we're, we have a star mask here we're not going to use it in the traditional sense of using a star mask as we'll see in a minute when we get to the deconvolution process module. So I've got my deringing mask I'm going to minimize that window and put it off to the side for the time being and we're done with the star mask so I can go ahead and close that process module. Third step is to create a luminance mask. Um, you probably do this for all kinds of other stuff in your images and this the way that we're going to do this one is no different. Using the screen transfer function we're going to let me back up. We're going to drag and create a copy of our image Then using the auto screen stretch function we'll drag those settings for the auto screen stretch down to the histogram transformation process module I can close the screen transfer function now. I won't need it. And using the histogram transformation, we'll drop those, those parameters onto our luminance mask to make it a permanent stretch in the image. Close the histogram transformation. And just for clarity again, I'll rename this image the luminance mask. We'll put him off to the side for safekeeping for a moment. The fourth thing that I want to do is I, I create previews. I can hit Alt N here for create a new preview. And I just create a handful of previews around the image because I want to I want to do deconvolution on these smaller areas first. Choose some of the high signal areas where I really want to see what sort of increase in detail I'm going to get. Um, I'll also choose kind of some of this wispy stuff down here. Okay, let's look right in there. We're, Let's go right there. And then finally, I'll do one in this lower, in a really low signal area, just to make sure I'm not getting any strange artifacts there. With the luminance mask, I shouldn't, but it never hurts to be sure. So there we have it. We have our point spread function. We've used the star mask process module to create a D-ringing mask. We've created a luminance mask, and I've got a handful of previews on the image here. 
Now we're ready to do the deconvolution. Under the Process Explorer, choose the deconvolution process module. Across the top, I'm going to choose the tab for external PSF. I'm going to click the view identifier and I'm going to, I'm going to use the point spread function that we generated a minute ago. I always use the regular, regular Richardson Lucy deconvolution and I usually start at 25 iterations. Um, I'll go up oh, 50, even 60 sometimes. Um, beyond that I found that I, it actually starts to generate artifacts rather than being of any real help. I found that 25 to 50 is usually good enough. I want to turn on D-ringing. The idea here with turning on D-ringing is to prevent the big black ugly rings that we get around stars and the strange artifacts that, that causes. There's a couple of settings that I change here too though. Uh, Manuel Jimenez su suggested lowering the global dark and I found that that certainly helps a lot. So I'll start with 0 0.01. But I also want to turn on local D-ringing. This is where I use that star mask. I'll turn on local D-ringing and then for the local support I'll choose my view D-ringing mask. And this this goes a long way to help control big black rings around our around our brighter stars. Finally, the last thing that I want to do is I want to drag my luminance mask over and apply it to our actual image. So that we're masking the lower signal to noise areas and not masking the high signal area so much. Let me hide this mask so that we can whoops, click here and we'll hide this mask so that we can see what we're dealing with still. And then I'll start working, whoops, I'll start working from the previews. I do the deconvolution on the previews. You can see here we're at 200 percent on preview 1 and it's a small area so the deconvolution will run very quickly and I can see what sort of results I can expect. You know, there's there's 25 iterations right there. Now, you see here under the preview menu, Control Shift Z, I can undo the deconvolution. I can also redo it by hitting Control Shift Z again, and you know, just go back and forth between before and after, before and after. You can see from the before, like in the pillars of creation area there in the center, you can see it sharpens up a lot and a lot of detail starts to come out. And our stars, especially across the top of the image, our stars are getting smaller. But as you can see around these the stars, especially this one here at the very top, see we're also getting a little bit of a little bit of ringing, a little bit of dark rings around there. This is where I'll start tweaking the global dark setting. So I'll push that up to 0 0.04 and I'll, I'll start all over. I'll do my deconvolution again, 25 iterations. See if that helps us. That, that seemed to do better. It still seems like there's a little bit of ring showing up there. So I'll push the global D-ringing up even higher, or the global dark setting, I'm sorry, up even higher to 0 0.07 and we'll try it again. we go that seems there's before and after before and after and it, it, it. I'm liking the result that I get there that's what I'll say I like the result there so we'll go with those settings and now the one other thing that I'll try is I'll try push up from 25 up to 50 and see if that gets me a better result if I can get more sharpening and more more detail at a certain point, we'll start to generate some ugly artifacts, which is what I really want to avoid. And that's what I'll be looking for on some of the other stuff that I do. See here, so there's before, there's after 50 iterations. Um, what I'd be looking for is I'm, I'm looking like right around the edges here in the pillars of creation to make sure that this, this isn't getting too sharp, isn't getting almost unnatural looking. Um, this is where you can really overshoot it. You'll see here down in the dark in the shadows, we're actually getting some detail to pop out. Um, I'm going to push the iterations way up here because I want to show show something, show what I'm looking for, what I'm looking to prevent. So I'll actually go to 150 iterations here, and I would expect that this is going to generate some of the artifacts that I'm trying to avoid. 
this course is going to take a few seconds. What happens is, is that some of the bright filaments will start to look like what I call, for lack of a better word, look like worms. They, uh, they just look unnatural and, and like almost drawn in. And you can see here that we, we really got that, like up around the top here. And, and, and inside the pillars here, you can see these, these, these little filaments have become so sharp that they just don't look natural. They look like little, little worms wriggling around in there. There's the before, there's the after. And it, to me, that's just, just too much. So I'm going to back down to 50. I like the results that I get with 50. So now that I think I've established the settings that I want to use, now I'm going to start, start with my other previews. And I'll apply the deconvolution to those other previews just to make sure that it's behaving the way that I think that it should. That I'll get you know, the same sort of results in those other areas. And yeah, this is this is the part of the image that I was really watching. So there's the after with 50 iterations. There's the before, after, before, and after. You can see that this this band really really sharpens up nicely. Some some nice detail comes out in there. I like what I've got there. I'll go on to preview three. This is kind of some of those wispier areas down in the, in the bottom left of my image. Um, what I'm looking for here really is to make sure that I'm just not generating crazy artifacts in the lower signal areas. See the stars are shrinking up a little bit there. And uh, we'll go look here at this last. And this is basically the darkest area of the image. Apply deconvolution there. See what kind of results that we get. Make sure that we're not getting any any poor artifacts there. So there I have it. I've done it on all four of my previews. I've I've got some settings that I like. So now I'm going to delete all the previews and get back to my regular image. And I'm going to kick off 50 iterations of deconvolution. This is going to take a couple of minutes to run on this on this PC. So I'm going to pause here and I'll come back in just a minute as it finishes and we'll go around the image and look at look at the results. All right. So the deconvolution process is almost through its 50 iterations on the entire 8 megapixel image. We'll, we'll let this finish up here and then we'll zoom in and I'll take a look at, at at the results. See if we like what we got. So zoom in close. I'm going to maximize the window here as well so I can take a look at the data as a whole. And this is at a hundred percent here. So I hit Control Z to undo and just kind of see a do a little before and after game again. Um, Control Z undoes, Control Y to redo. You can see I was able to shrink the stars down a little bit, but what I like even more is that, that, that there's a good amount of data has come out. There's a lot. There's significantly more detail. Like in this little little finger of nebulosity here, I just I just really like what the deconvolution has done for that. And here's my final result from the deconvolution. Hopefully, this helps you get some better results from the deconvolution process yourself. Um, for further support, the PixInsight.com forums are a great place. It's a great community to get additional help and to find some new and probably even better ways from the way that I do it. Um, if you like what you saw or you have any comments or ways that I can even improve on the process, please feel free to drop me a note. I'd, be, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.